Hello everyone, it's Thursday and you're watching Within the Frame. I'm Kim bo -kyung. Tomorrow, May 5th, is Children's Day in South Korea. The country has been commemorating Children's Day for over a century. Of course, much improvement has been made during that time, but the quality of life and happiness felt by children remain at worsome levels. Some are even the victims of abuse-related crimes. Children's rights in North Korea is also an issue that needs to be tackled. Today's edition of Within the Frame will look at ways to enable children to better enjoy their lives, not just in South Korea, but around the world. And for this, we have invited a special guest. We have the chairman of the Save the Children Korea, Oh Jun, joining us in the studio. Mr. Oh has also served as a former South Korean ambassador to the United Nations. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Good. Now, Mr. Oh, uh, Save the Children, the international aid group and Seoul National uh, University issued a report on children's uh, well-being as well as quality of life. Now, what was the report's finding? What did it suggest? Well, uh, Save the Children Korea has been working with Seoul National University for the last 10 years, um, carrying out research on the quality of children's life in, in Korea. And according to that uh, research, uh, the quality of uh, life of children uh, well, has been improving gradually over the years, mm -hmm. but it has not reached a satisfactory level yet, uh, not least compared to other countries in the OECD. Mm. For example, um, in 2021, two years ago, um, the happiness index for 10-year-old uh, children in Korea uh, ranked only 31st mm. among all the 35 countries where the research was conducted. And only about 40% uh, of all the children who participated in the research said that Korea is a, a country where children are happy. Mm. So there's, uh, there, there is uh, still, I think, a long way to go for us. And um, among the uh, four basic rights of, of children as embodied in the Convention of the Rights of uh, the Child, um, the four basic rights meaning uh, right to uh, survivor, uh, protection, mm -hmm. development, and participation. Mm -hmm. Among these four rights, I think Korean children have left behind uh, the problems related to survivor by now. Mm. But we uh, still have a lot of issues uh, regarding the other three categories of the rights. Mm. Right. I mean, it is quite unfortunate to hear that South Korean children's uh, comparatively uh, their happiness is not that high. Uh, why do you believe children in South Korea are having those kind of unhappy lives? What are the elements behind that? Well, even though, uh, as I said, our children uh, might be no longer exposed to the risk of uh, uh, malnutrition or starvation. Um, there are unfortunately increasing cases of uh, child abuses mm -hmm. and broken families. Mm -hmm. And as such, um, you know, um, they still have a lot of problems, uh, which are, I should say, more typical to developed countries. Mm -hmm. You know, child abuses and broken families are more often find in, found in developed countries. And in addition to that, I think Korean society has uh, uh, long-standing problems uh, related to what I should call the excessively competitive mm. education system. Mm. So too much emphasis on academic performance right. hampers children from uh, you know, using their time in a balanced manner and also uh, achieving uh, comprehensive self-actualization. Right. I myself actually was, uh, I do not want to say it like that, I don't want to put it like this, but I was actually a victim as well of those competitive... All of us are. Yeah. <laughs> 
Now, uh, adding on to that, uh, I'd like to tip on the children's rights. Now, you mentioned about the child abuse uh, cases. What is the status quo in terms of children's rights and what areas are overlooked ones? Hmm. The reports of uh, uh, child abuses uh, have been increasing in, in recent years. Mm. Uh, I think the reported cases almost doubled in the course of five years. And, but of course, that has to do with the fact that there are now more whistleblowers, mm. such as teachers and caregivers, who uh, in the past didn't report on such instance, mm -hmm. but, that, but that now they are more conscious of these problems and they do report. Mm. So that is one of the reasons why the number has increased. Uh, but still, I think our society should be alarmed by the, by the rise in uh, child abuses. And in a country like uh, Korea, where uh, children, especially teenagers, uh, consume a lot of uh, uh, digital contents, uh, they are also at the risk of uh, being exposed to uh, online abuses mm -hmm. and online crimes as well. Mm, I see. Now, to protect children's human rights, Mr. O, the UN, like you said before, adopted the Convention on the Rights of the Child in 1989, which is the most basic and important agreement made by countries to protect the rights of kids. Now, could you tell us the main clauses of this convention and what do you believe is the most important one? The Convention on the Rights of Child uh, has 52 articles mm -hmm. in it. Um, it is uh, listing a lot of uh, uh, rights for children to be, uh, to be guaranteed by society and also the state. And um, the, basically, as I said earlier, the, the convention uh, is about four categories of basic rights of children. Mm. Four categories, meaning uh, right to right to survival, uh, protection, mm -hmm. development, and participation. Mm. So all these rights are uh, all these rights fall into one of these four categories. Mm. And um, but what is most important about the convention, in my opinion, is that um, you know, by adopting this convention, uh, the international community, uh, actually the whole world, uh, started to uh, treat a child as an independent subject of right, mm. rather than someone uh, to be protected by a judge. Uh, so that's a big change, and this is in line with Article 1 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights of 1948, mm. which said all human beings are born free mm -hmm. and equal in dignity and rights. Mm, I see. Now, let's move on to South Korea's uh, situation. It ratified the UN Convention, and now it is moving towards to establish a law that governs the rights of children and the state's responsibility towards them. What aspects should be thoroughly looked into? Um, the Korean government uh, has announced recently that they, they would uh, enact uh, a kind of framework act on children's rights, mm -hmm. uh, which is a, a little belated, but I think it is necessary uh, for us at this stage of uh, development. Mm -hmm. And um, the, many other countries already ha have such an act. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, if we have this uh, uh, framework act, that would comprise all important uh, features of the Convention on the Rights of the Child. Mm -hmm. uh, that, but even though, uh, even today, we already have uh, laws and regulations regarding uh, welfare uh, of children and also education for children. But they, they have been so far a little fragmented. Oh. So if we have this framework act, framework law, that would be 
that will make all of them more uh, comprehensive and more effective. Mm. I see. Now, staying on children's rights front, uh, interestingly, I remember hearing from the Save the Children that climate change could pose risks to children's rights. How come is it related and how should the issue be tackled? Well, two years ago in 2021, uh, Save the Children International uh, issued a report that was titled Born into the Climate crisis, mm. which means that children who are born now mm -hmm. are born into the climate crisis, mm. you know, w without their intention. Mm. Um, and uh, according to that uh, report, children who are born in 2020, uh, compared to children who were born in 1960, mm -hmm. have a uh, very high risk of uh, uh, getting exposed to climate crisis, cli uh, climate problems. Uh, for example, they have uh, at least uh, seven times higher chance of experiencing heat waves mm. and three times uh, more chance of, uh, of floodings. Mm. So all of these uh, show that children who are born today will have to suffer from a lot of climate related problems in their future. Mm. So if we do not act now, that might mean that, uh, you know, 30, 40 years later, mm. uh, the next generation will have to spend all their energy and time for survival. Right. No development, just mm. the survival of humanity would be the, the most important uh, issue for our next generation, which is sad. Mm, indeed. I mean, we have to act now unless our future generation would have to suffer. Mm. Now, um, shifting gears a little bit here, moving on to children in North Korea, I recall an impressive speech that you gave when you were the South Korean ambassador to the United Nations. And I'd like to ask you about children's rights in North Korea. What is the situation right there? Well, um, the South Korean Ministry of Unification uh, recently uh, uh, published a report. Mm. Uh, actually, it was the first time right. that South Korean government did it. And according to that report, uh, there are a lot of uh, cases of uh, human rights violations taking place in North Korea. And some of them are about uh, child rights abuses, child abuses. Mm. For example, there is a case of uh, uh, a child below the age of 18 mm -hmm. uh, being executed in public, mm. which is a, a grave human rights violation. And I think the situation was, uh, you know, situation is getting worse there uh, due to the pandemic lockdown mm -hmm. and also the international sanctions mm -hmm. placed on North Korea due to their uh, nuclear and missile developments. Um, so that makes things, uh, you know, that, that exacerbates uh, the situation there. I, I think they might be faced with a new round of uh, food crisis. Mm -hmm. They already had a very serious food crisis in 1990s. Mm. So this time round, uh, you know, that's, that's a very big risk. And if that happens, uh, children who are vulnerable and dependent on adults, they have to suffer more, you know, mm. if uh, they don't have enough food. Uh, children are affected uh, in a very serious manner. Mm. Right. As you mentioned just before, South Korea revealed the document de de details of Pyongyang's human rights situation for the first time, that is. And President Yoon suk yeol in his speech to U.S. Congress recently, he also criticized the reclusive regime for mm. this human rights violations. Mm. I wonder, what can international society do to tackle this situation altogether? Well, international society has been uh, relying on what should be called uh, naming and shaming. You know, naming, naming and shaming. shaming means that the, for example, the United Nations uh, 
adopt uh, human rights resolutions mm -hmm. on North Korea. Actually, they have been doing that for the last 20 years, mm -hmm. since 2003. Mm -hmm. The United Nations Human Rights Council and also General Assembly have been adopting um, resolutions on the situation of human rights in North Korea. That could be naming and shaming, which means uh, pressure on mm. North Korea. But, you know, pressuring might not be enough. So since 2014, uh, as you mentioned, uh, when I made that speech at the UN Security Council, since 2014, uh, the, the United Nations Security Council is also discussing the North Korean human rights issues. Mm -hmm. Uh, with the possibility of referring the issue to International Criminal Court, mm -hmm. which has not been realized, but that should be a kind of threat to North Korea. So we only hope that uh, you know, North Korea, uh, under pressure, will take measures mm -hmm. to improve the human rights situation in North Korea. And in the meantime, I think what the international community can do about it, uh, one of them is uh, to provide uh, humanitarian assistance to mm. North Korea. Mm. Because even under the international sanctions, humanitarian assistance is still allowed. So if uh, they provide assistance through, for example, UNIF, UNICEF mm -hmm. or World Food Program, then uh, people on the streets in North Korea will be able to benefit from them. Mm. So that's one of the things the international community can do to help North Koreans. Right, I see. Now, uh, Save the Children, where you are serving as a uh, current chair of the Korean board, it's providing a broad range of humanitarian aid for children in uh, such areas like medicine, uh, education, and food, not just in South Korea, but also uh, in a number of developing countries. Now, how do you believe such efforts will be able to forge a better future for children there? Mm. Well, actually, uh, since we are talking about North Korea, Mm -hmm. Save the Children was running a program in North Korea mm -hmm. until 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, we supported the child care center. We provided some vaccines for children. But most uh, NGOs, civil society organizations, withdrew from North Korea in 2018 mm -hmm. when the sanctions were uh, strengthened, upgraded. Mm. Mm. So it was very, very difficult for us to continue to work there. Um, but uh, Save the Children is trying to help children everywhere, uh, children in need everywhere, uh, whether they are in um, developing countries, like in Africa or in Asia, or sometimes in developed countries as well. Oh, really? As I mentioned earlier, for example, in South Korea. Mm. South Korea has a developed uh, economy, but still our children have uh, problems that are typical to developed countries. Right. So mm. we, we, we run our programs, half of, half of them inside Korea, and the other half internationally. Mm. Right. I do not want to let you go, but before, uh, since we are running out of time, before I let you go, could you give us any advice or suggestion on how to make a country, any country that is, a happier place for children to be? Mm. Well, I think we, all of us, should remember that we were all children oh, at right. one point. Mm. You know, that's so natural and that's so self-evident, mm. but we, we, often forget that. Mm. So when you become an adult, uh, we, we, we tend to forget that and, and, and there are, that's probably one of the reasons why there are so many cases of child abuses mm. and neglected children. Uh, so um, I, I think uh, what is important for all of us is to remember mm. that one day uh, children will uh, take the whole world over from us. Mm. You know, we will no longer be here. Right. Only our children, when they grow up, they will be here and they will have to take care of everything. So we want to leave them a responsible society, a 
sustainable environment so that they can continue to not only to survive, but also to prosper uh, in the future for the whole humanity and the Earth. Right. Something to keep in mind that we were once, yeah. everyone was once a children. Now, I hope every child, not just in South Korea and of course around the world, could live much better life in a stable in environment. Now, unfortunately, this is all the time we have for today's edition. But Mr. Oh, thank you for your insight. We really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. This is all for Within the Frame tonight. But we will be next Monday with more in-depth stories. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the weekend and goodbye.